What's up guys, it's your boy Loon here. <laughs> What's up guys, it's your boy Loon here. Welcome to another video. Today we are in Cleveland, Ohio. I know, what am I doing in Cleveland, Ohio, right? The goal of the food tours is I wanna hit every single city and explore the best foods in everywhere we go and you guys know the deal. We have five restaurants. We're actually gonna start off the food tour at our very first spot and the most famous spot in Cleveland, Ohio, McDonald's but specifically the play place. Last night, we actually had our first food spot. It was in Sauce the City. I don't want to ruin too much because it was a really great time. It was a little too dark to film the intro, so we're going to rewind things and start there. I'll see you guys right after Sauce the City. First spot of the day, Sauce the City. Sauce the City is a Cleveland hotspot that provides an array of delicious eats. From loaded fries to wings to street corns to Cleveland's number one and award-winning hot chicken sandwiches. I'm super excited to try this all, but before we get into it, let's meet the owner, Vic. Hey guys, I'm Chef Vic. I'm the owner of Sauce the City, home of the Cleveland Hot Chicken Sandwich, the number one chicken sandwich in the city. Sauce City started in Kent State University. We used to do carnivals and fairs. I took one entrepreneurship class from that. I was able to start my own signature sauce company. Every summer we'll go to carnivals and fairs, we'll bring out our signature sauces and we would kill it. So we just kept that going until I graduated Kent State. I got my spot here and then that was it, man. So now we're in the Brown Stadium, we're in the Cavalier Stadium, we have two restaurants in both stadiums. Also, we're working on an east side location as well. We make everything fresh. It's gonna take a little bit longer to make their food, but I guarantee you, you will go away crying that it's that good, I'm telling you, man. We change lives. It's like sauce therapy. So my favorite food item, of course, is the Cleveland Hot Chicken Sandwich. So it's a seven out of 10, so it's not gonna burn your face off, but everybody can enjoy it. Bed of cooling sauce, which is our own version of our ranch. We deep fry the chicken and toss it in the Cleveland Hot Sauce. Then we top it off with the kale slaw, and that's all on a butter brioche bun. So you're gonna get that sweetness, you're gonna get that spice, you will get that savoriness, everything in one. It's gonna, it's gonna change your life. All right guys, so we are officially starting the Cleveland food tour. And I know I'm dressed differently because the intro was filmed tomorrow. It's kind of dark outside right now, but this is the first official spot of Cleveland food tour. Super excited, Vic was awesome. And, oh my God. Loon? I thought you were in Europe. What are you doing here? This is someone I met at the strip club. Lauren's back on the Don't channel. Don't make fun of my part-time job. <laughs> Look at what they got us. This is the Cleveland hot chicken sandwich. This is the one that Vic was hyping up. I'm really excited about this. This one actually won an award in 2019. Pretty sick for the best sandwich. That is the loaded fries with nacho cheese, bacon, ranch, and sour cream. Boy, dete or dite chicken sandwich, something like that. It's very similar to the other one. It's but this one thick. actually has sweet dite sauce instead of it just being uh, spicy. She looks thick as You'll actually like that one because it's less spicy. This well, one's I a little mean, bit more. I like spicy now. Okay, guys, oh, cultured, my spice cultured. Oh my God. All right, school ranch wings, bro. Thank you so much, Vic. You are wonderful. Thank you for having me. He was a really so cool much. guy, great so owner. Funny. Let's get into these loaded fries. Okay. Nacho I'm fries. I'm gonna go in the middle because I'm dirty. Is that gross to say? Wow. Dog. The french fries remind me of like a sporting event. You know how when you guys go to a sporting event, you guys get fries there? You're, they're usually overpriced there, but they're like really yeah. fried or like a crispy. These are really good. The nacho cheese on this boy, what stands out in this is that sauce right here, the white sauce. And that's what she said. No, really like, great standard fries. That would be my dinner for like every meal. <laughs> it is a lot, dude. Like they, it's they come a lot, that's what I'm saying. All right, cool yeah. ranch wings. Let's get messy with it. I'm sorry. Dink it. This? Sink it. Oh my God. This is literally a ranch lover's dream. If you love ranch, you're gonna nut at this place. The chicken's really nice too. Mm -hmm. They do not skimp on the cheese here. It tastes like they killed the chickens in the back. It's that fresh, you know what I'm saying? And then they just slapped it with so much cheese. Uh -huh. Like doused it and then ranch, salt bay. But imagine just ranch. Well, you can't hold ranch on that. You can't if you're salt bay. It's a weird mix of softness and crispiness. So, behind us, we have the vegan club, and they make vegan food here too. And right here, we have the crab fries, and it's not actual crab, obviously, vegan food. Should we compare? Yeah, actually. Bro, that might be better than that. French fries, Dowson Lemon has sex with a seafood boil. And they created this baby. It's a messy baby, this is awesome. but it's a nice baby. This is how I imagine Marshawn Lynch looked when he was younger. I'm not even sure this is better than this one, bro. I don't know, this is hard. They're different, like, they do different things. Yeah. You know how you have twin brothers and they end up being polar opposites, but yeah. they kind of look similar? Yeah. Zach and Cody. <laughs> All right, elote. Y'all know me in elote. I'm in love with no, elote. No, it's fine, I'll get my own elote. 
Lightsaber battle. You have to like put your hand out. You didn't like this? It. Who lightsaber battles like that? Oh, it's different here. The most flavor out of this is cheese, then corn. I love it. <laughs> My friend, Uncle Mike, you know, down the road, he, he invited me to a barbecue. Somehow, he's dating a Mexican girl. Uncle Mike's black, this she's Mexican. So Boom, elote. This is fire. All right, guys, one bite. <laughs> ah! Damn, what that mouth do? Oh, no, what? Boom. Go ahead. Oh my God. I would like caramelized chicken. Yeah, I was about to say. They made chicken and waffles into a sandwich. Even the waffle taste somehow. Like the sweetness and the, uh, oh my God. So unique. If Chick-fil-A was doused in syrup, went to the gym, worked out a bunch, gained mass after bulking, boom. You got this bad boy. This one is a big boy, actually. Fatty. Oh my God. So much flavor. Oh my God, that's my favorite one. I see why it's an award winner. Damn. Yeah. The chicken is filled with meat. Like it tastes like chicken. You know what I'm saying? Like you go to like McDonald's, get a chicken sandwich. It tastes like just the bread it tastes. Bread. This, you can taste the chicken in this. I like the spice level. It's like tingling your tongue, but it's only flirting with your tongue. It's not taking you out on dates yet. It's just kind of like, hey babe, what's up? To my what's tongue. And my tongue's like questioning it right now. But then I figures out how good tasting it is. It's like, all right, let's go on a date. Where are we going? You know what I'm saying? That's good chicken. If you like spicy, you have to get this one. It's a Cleveland hot sandwich. Delicious. It's kind of like a Nashville hot, but it is a little bit more subtle. Different type of flavor too. It's, it's a lot more um, like seasoned chicken. It's very delicious. Biggest recommendation right here, personally, especially if you like spicy. Now, if you're in the sweet side, you're not a spicy guy. Oh my God. This literally tastes like chicken and waffles in one. It's called the dip. Dete or dete chicken sandwich. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. The chicken wings are really great, especially if you like cheese and ranch flavor. If you like seafood flavor, go for this. Or if you're vegan, you know, this is like your classic American meal. Like you're, well, you're watching football, American baseball. football on Sunday or baseball. baseball on Monday. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna watch and eat some of these fries right here. Sausage City, amazing time. Amazing owner, fantastic Absolutely. environment. Beautiful girls go here, like, come on. I'm gonna say, 8.8. 8.8 is my final score, but you know what? Because Vic was such a cool guy, I'm gonna bump it to 8.9. Catch up with you guys tomorrow at the next spot. Salsa City, baby. We city in, we salsa. All right, so we ended up at a La Quinta because you know your boy didn't want to ball out like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> room service. The room service. There's supposed to be a maid in here. Hero. Did you actually not get in? Yeah, the keys are in here. Oh, I was laying on the bed waiting for you. I was like this. Oh, it's supposed to be dead? Yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this plasma screen, 20 inch TV right here. <laughs> oh, this is cute though. No, this the is really cute. cute. I don't know who La Quinta is, but appreciate you. Next, we have Cafe Everest. Cafe Everest is a Nepali and Indian restaurant that offers authentic South Asian cuisine. Cafe Everest has all the classics from various momos or dumplings, birani, masala, and much more. I'm super excited, but before we get into it, let's meet the co-owner, Tara. Hi, I'm Tara Riley, and I'm the uh, co-owners of Cafe Everest. So the Cafe Everest, you know, I mean, we came here as a refugee, and so there was only one Nepali restaurant in Cleveland. I mean, they have really delicious food, but you know, it's still, they need more restaurant, you know, Nepali restaurant. My friends were like, hey, uh, is there anything like, you know, Nepalese cuisine, like like really good food? So everything we make here is like homemade recipes. Our food is predominantly like spicy. So it is start from like four to five out of 10. Yeah, it's spicy uh, chicken momos, you know, like chicken chili momos. Those are like, we fried the momos and then we put it in a sauce, like a spicy sauce, a little bit of like onions and bell peppers. Yeah, that's the spiciest one here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yep, thank you, thank you, yep. You're at Cafe Everest, a, a Nepali and a little bit of Indian cuisine mainly Nepali though which is interesting I've never had Nepalian food Neither have I. it's a neighboring country of like the Indian area yeah so we got three very popular food items we have the chicken birani chili chicken momo you eat that last because okay. you're gonna ruin your appetite <laughs> and then this is the regular chicken momo oh I don't want to spill it it's with soup yeah, okay which kind of reminds me of soup dumpling in a way first time eating Nepalian food without further ado let's get to start all right let's try this Oh my god. Oh, yum, yum. Oh my god. Bro, it tastes like Vietnamese curry 
on top of rice, but Indian styled rice. Mm -hmm. It's curry. It is spicy too. Can you handle it? It's a different rice. It's not that spicy. It's got a little kick to it. Four or five out of ten in terms of spice. They got a little chunks of chicken in here. That's like straight up flavored with the chicken is so curry. Good. Oh my gosh. Tingles your tongue for sure, the spice. It's I guess really it does good. tingle my tongue, but in a good way. Yeah, it's a little flirty, like just tickle tickle, you know? It's almost like a perfect sharing dish. You get like a group of three or four people, you get the mm -hmm. chicken biryani, everybody gets a little bit of taste of it. It's a great, almost like a side like onto everything else. Though. Highly recommend. All right, I don't know, let's try this. All right, chicken momo. All right, dink it. Sink it. All right, thank you ladies. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Oh. No. That is nothing like Chinese dumplings. Like at all. The soup is nice and light. The soup is um a little coconutty. Very light. Imagine if you got instead of ground beef, ground chicken, soaked it in like herbs, and then you, the soup is the majority of the flavor, but the texture is the dumpling with the ground chicken. It's very unique. I don't know how to even describe it beyond that. He said this sucker makes people cry. This is actually chili vegetable momo. Also momo is such a cute name. I know. All right. Reminds me of like something in these bird. Let's see if I cry. Oh, that's not spicy. I feel like he made it not spicy for us. That's spicier. Is it, are you sure? I think you can ask for spice, and I think this isn't spicy. This version, because this is sweet. Oh, this is sweet. Yeah, it's like sweet. It's good. It tastes like um sweet and sour chicken, but on top of dump dumplings. I was gonna say sweet and sour chicken. Imagine a vegetable dumpling with sweet and sour chicken sauce. It mm. tastes kind of like an egg roll. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna really eat good. all this, bro. None of this missed. Can't this put like one over another. Really freaking good food, man. Overall score, I'm gonna score Cafe Everest. You're gonna get a 9.4. This is an amazing place. I highly, highly recommend this if you're in Cleveland. No, this is so If you're good. into like oriental food or like, not oriental, but like if but you're, like, well, yeah, technically, because yeah. aren't they Asian? This is bang, bro. Highly recommend. All right, guys, so we are in our third spot of the food tour, and we are at the Asian Palace. Ah. No, it's the Asian Plaza. I guess this is like a little Asian area of Cleveland. It's kind of cool. We drove by here and we saw a bunch of Asian things, but we are going to Ball Ball Waffle, which is a Hong Kong inspired dessert place. I am Eldest. This is Ball Ball Waffle. I'm the owner and also my wife. She's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> because the, this kind of uh, bubble waffle is uh, very popular in Hong Kong. I moved from Hong Kong to Ohio and want to have some business. And so we do um, some research. There's no such a thing in Ohio. We are selling the authenticity. We are from Hong Kong, we are 100% Hong Kong people. So the milk teas, the bubble waffles, yeah, it's the, all the Hong Kong recipe. Yeah, I give you the list of the, mm -hmm. our specialists. The Hong Kong style is the waffle with condensed milk and peanut butter on top. In Hong Kong, they have the condensed milk and peanut butter toast. So we transfer the idea to the waffle. The Hong Kong milk tea is uh, just Hong Kong milk tea. Yeah. yeah. So very Hong yeah. Kong. <laughs> yeah. And also the milk tea with coffee jelly. And also the Portuguese egg tart. In Hong Kong, the Portuguese egg tart is very, very popular. The crispy egg roll. This one is from Taiwan. This one is my wife's business. And also the avocado and the Spanish coffee. So we are at our third spot of the Cleveland food tour and we are at Ball Ball Waffle. And go, let's go right down the menu. So first we're gonna try the Hong Kong style peanut butter and condensed milk it's so pretty like how am i even supposed to eat this it's like eating art oh my god so crispy and soft in the inside you ever had a peanut butter wafer kind of tastes like a nutty buddy nutty buddy but lighter it's like a floofy taste very delicious um i think this is great for kids lana would love this oh my god if you're a peanut butter lover, mm. yeah. and they got condensed milk on it, yeah. so good. Egg tart, and these are still hot, so. Ooh. This is actually really hot right now, so I'm gonna wait. This is the hot Hong Kong milk tea. Ooh, you can smell the tea. Ooh, it tastes like black tea, uh, your Chinese mom brewed, and then it has hints of the boba coffee flavor. Don't get it expecting boba milk tea. It doesn't taste like milk tea. Hard black coffee, authentic, and then a little bit of like the coffee and extra flavors in it. It's more of a tea drink. It's very good. Crispy egg rolls. Oh, I know these. These are like the sweet egg rolls. They're, they're not actually egg rolls. It's, it's kind of like wafers. Yeah, here they call it crispy egg rolls. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're banging, bro. Really? You can buy these in a store, Asian store, but this one, you can tell they just make it here. Same style though. Has a little bit of like a creamy texture in the inside. Very, very crispy. 
Mm, that's really good. Uh, it tastes like an egg tart, but in a wafer form. Oh, okay. Coffee jelly, milk tea. Okay, this one to me, the standard, this one is banging. Like, oh my God. All, right, all my Vietnamese people out there, I know as a kid, you drank grass jelly drink. This texture is the same as grass jelly, except for it's coffee flavored, like espresso flavored. And it's high of a milk tea that also kind of tastes like coffee. It's very delicious. Literally like a coffee drink almost. That's, that's really good. Highly recommend this. This is like bang. All right, here we go. Hot egg tart, Team Big Bites. Oh my gosh. Hey, leave a little bit. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Whoa, that's different than the egg tarts I'm used to. It's more egg than the tart. It's got a lot of the egg flavor. I see. And imagine a really creamy, sugary burst of scrambled eggs. You know the texture of scrambled eggs? The texture is what you feel when you bite into it. You can remember this as a mini egg pie. Of all the things here, I'm gonna say you're gonna have to order, must order this bad boy right here. Hong Kong style milk tea, but ice. With coffee jellies, banging. If you're going home, and bringing it long term, I would get this fresh though. This one's really good, especially if you like peanut butter. I'm gonna land the total score at an 8.5. So Lauren thinks she can <laughs> kick to my head. You're, my head is right here. You're about yay big. I'll, I'll, I'll even give her the chin because I don't even think she can kick it to the chin. You're, you're yay big. So what do you think I can do? Chin is right here. Why do you think I can't Can you do hit it? my hand? I can rocket kick your hand right now do instead it. of doing it from the side. Do it. Okay. Like what? All right, let's do the top of my head then. Okay. My leg isn't even that long, to be honest. Can you go over my head? I can try. My legs. So you have to go that, over my. But my leg's arm. not that long. But okay. Okay. Yeah, you have short legs. But you have longer legs than me. What do you mean? Actually. Yeah. Pull up. Go on. Try. <laughs> you about need yourself for that. <laughs> for our fourth spot of the day, we're at Bialy's Bagels. Bialy's Bagels is the prime bagel spot if you're in Cleveland. Bialy's has a vast selection of bagels, all made from scratch. And soon in the video, you'll see Rachel, one of the owners, explain to us the whole process in which they make their bagels. And with that being said, let's go ahead and meet Rachel. Hello, my name is Rachel Gross. I am the co-owner of Bialy's Bagels. My twin sister and I bought the business in December of 2017. My sister and I have been interested in owning a bagel shop for 15 or 20 years now. It's like a passion that we've had. I mean, bagels are just like yeah. the best. We were inspired by our uncle who lived in North Carolina and owned his own bagel shop. A dear friend of our dad's happened to be playing tennis with the previous owner of Bialy's. The previous owner of Bialy's just sort of said to my dad's friend, like nonchalantly, I've got this bagel shop and I'm trying to sell it. I'm kind of tired of making bagels. The next day we, we started negotiating and in December of 2017, Sarah and I became the owners of Bialy's Bagels and we've been awesome. here ever since. Like a lot of the corporate bagel shops, the most important difference from us to them is that we're making our bagel dough fresh in house. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming. Hi guys, we are now officially in the car. We're all rocking our Bialy's bagel shirts. Thank you so much Bialy Bagels. Rachel and Sarah were so nice to us. They gave us so much more than you know we ever could ask for. They gave us Buster's Brews Coffee, which is modeled after their late brother. Mish Mosh, which is their everything seasoning, which is awesome, branded to them. So today we have an assortment of like a shit ton of bagels. 14 different types of bagels because right now they're going through the process of finding a new cream cheese distributor we stopped by whole foods to get some cream cheese all right so first bagel plain bagels but before we do this we're gonna segment real quick to show you guys the process of the bagel making We start at the back pallet with flour bags four of those flour bags so 200 pounds of flour and then another 100 pounds of water, malt, salt, and yeast. We actually call our plain bagel dough water bagels. And the water dough made plain poppy, sesame, onion, garlic, mishmash, which is our what we call everything bagel, asiago, and smoked salt rosemary. It mixes for about 12 minutes in this giant mixer and then we slice it and put it into the divider. The person who loads there also comes down here and then there's two people standing on either side of the and then I bring a box of those dough of that dough cut into pieces to the table and we do this motion like you're making bread rolls. They sit in the box to proof. They get stretched by hand and seeded. So this is our walk-in cooler and freezer. Whoa, this is the fun part. So like this is 
all the dough that I made today. Wow. When the bagels come out of the cooler and freezer and are ready to bake, they go into the boiling kettle. They get lined up on these burlap boards onto a shelf in the oven. After that first rotation, we flip them so now the bottoms are on the shelf. And that is the process of baking bagels. So from, from kettle to basket up in the front is, you know, anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> so we got the original bagels here. Ooh. I liked it. Very um jelly. Mm-hmm. You can tell it's handmade. Ooh. The after flavor tastes almost like a... Okay, imagine if you made a pizza. Really good New York pizza. But you took out all the topping and everything, and it's just the bread. That's the aftertaste. Oh, hell yeah. That's a good fucking bagel. It's better than any North Carolina bagel. It's better than any bagel that I've had outside of New York. Yeah, this is competitive with all the New York bagels. Yeah. For sure. This is really good. Oh, this one's fascinating. Look at this sucker, guys. Pretzel, Pretzel bagel. Ooh. Very different from the plane. So much more crunch. Oh, that's better than the plane, dude. Honestly, <gasps> that's better than the plane. Damn, son. I get why this is Sarah's yeah, favorite. Yeah, yummy. Yeah. It's like eating a really fucking good pretzel. Mm-hmm. It's like this is the godfather of the original bagel. It's like the perfect balance of salt. All right, Asiago. <laughs> it's food. Oh, yeah. It has a smoky cheese flavor. That smokiness that you comes from if you cook from a grill. That's what it tastes like. It's very good. So we got a rye bagel. Rye till I die. No, no. This is not for me. It tastes too herby. It has a heavy herb taste. Are you sure that's rye? Yeah. Is that how rye bread is? I guess I never liked rye then. Tastes like you're drinking an herbal tea while eating a bagel. This is pumpernickel. Pump on nickels. Mmm. It's yummy. It tastes similar to the plain, but it has a more authentic bread taste. This tastes like you're actually eating bread, not a bagel. The original it's tastes like bread. Texas Roadhouse bread or something. Oh, Texas Roadhouse bread, yeah. Like a better version of Texas Roadhouse bread, yeah. That's exactly what it is. We have the wheats. It's just plain wheat. It's fun. Again, it's breadier. It's like a roll. They are very like thick, filled with substance bagels here. Yeah. That one just tastes like classic wheat. Is this onion? Yeah. I feel like this one's gonna be banging with cream yeah, cheese. I know. Or like red sauce. Whoa, bro. It's like onion that you cooked in a stir fry. This is fire. That's fire. That's fire. So then, a roasted onion or taste. Or like melted butter. Oh, butter with this would be fire. Pretty little rosemary. It's a lot of flaky flakes. It's gonna taste herby to you. Yeah, I mean, I cook rose with rosemary for steaks, but that's about it. That is Good. not like the other one. Really? Oh, yeah, this tastes like a steak. It just reminds me of steak because I cook my like, steak to rosemary. Yeah, I like rosemary. I don't like the taste of the other herb. Rosemary is good. That's fire. It's herby, but it's not full herb. Mishmash. Everything bagel. Tastes like a pretzel with herb. Whoa. Yo, they load this bitch up with seeds. It's so much seeds. It's so good. If I got like a bagel I that I didn't want to put too much on, just like maybe just cream cheese, easily the most flavorful bagel. Fuck yeah, baby. That's my second favorite. All right, she's eating the sesame seed one. The tiniest bite ever. Pretty good. It's like a bagel if an Asian person made it. Solid. Not bad. Look at this bad boy. No, they loaded this. You don't even see the bagel anymore. Yeah, you really don't see the bagel. That's pretty good. That's better than sesame seed to me. Whoa, it's soft. Yeah. Nice sauce. Imagine everything bagel, but you take out the saltiness. Blueberry, I'm actually excited for this. This might be my favorite, to be honest. Oh, bitch. Oh, they have like actual blueberry pieces on this. Mm -hmm. Whoa, look, guys. Yeah, I really love this bitch with blueberry. Whoa, fuck that yeah. So nice. That's so my favorite good. now. Holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah, that Holy shit fire. balls. Fuck, fuck, Baby, fuck. I would drive to Cleveland just to buy this. So Weird. this feels like the softest one called half and half. Half and half. And it's half pumpernickel, half egg. I love egg bagels, by the way. They're so fucking good. Oh, it's it, completely different texture. Bouncy. It's much more spongy. Yeah, bouncy. Yeah. It's a really good bagel. Oh, shit. That's better than the plain ones. All right. 
In conclusion, guys, Bialy's Bagel, great bagel spot, especially in Cleveland. You would never expect Cleveland to be known for bagels. Like you usually think about in like New York City. If I lived in Cleveland, this would be my bagel spot, 100%. If you live in Cleveland, this should be your bagel spot. Not only are the owners super, super nice, super, super dope, but their bagels are fire. They actually have a lot of substance to them. They're not like just all crust. They have a shit ton of flavors and a lot of them are good. In my personal opinion, the must tries are gonna be blueberry if you like sweet bagels, especially. That's my favorite. Pretzel bagels, personally my second favorite. Half and half is banging. The mishmash, which is like super popular. That one's really good, which is like an everything bagel. Asiago and rosemary. Those, those are gonna be my go-tos if I go here. Holy shit. Wow, very good food, highly recommend. Overall score for Bialy's Bagel, I'm gonna give it a 9.1. I wish you guys the most success. They gave us these shirts. You guys are the cutest and the best. Thank you guys. It's currently very disgusting outside, as you guys can see in Cleveland. It is mucky, but we are in this uh, really cute place. We meant to go to the 27 Club with uh, where MGK like owns his coffee bar place, but uh, it was like filled to the brim because it's concerts tonight. We don't have enough time to do all that. So uh, we are here at Rebel Coffee. It's around the area and it has really good reviews and uh we'll see if it's good all right lorena what'd you get you got just regular cold brew yeah ice cold brew <sighs> tastes like nature really? tastes like bamboo oh i don't like that yeah like <laughs> they had a really fun drink here it's called uh no nature's adderall and i told myself i would stop doing adderall after college but here we are It's better than yours, but it's still really herby. Still in the same ballpark. You know what I'm saying? Five out of ten. All right, squad. So we are here at uh, the concert. Time to support the homie Tosh and Kells. You know what's really funny? Everyone who is at this concert look like they would be at this concert. No, I know. <laughs> if you ever want to okay. see like guys with their nails done, just go to MGK concert. <laughs> I can't believe all these people came out to see me perform. Wait. Wow. Alright, you fucks, I didn't wear this glittery outfit for nothing. On the way to our next food spot, we stopped by Blue Sky Brews. Good vibes. Blue Sky. We got an ice latte and an ice cortado. How is it? Compare it to yesterday. Oh. Night and day. Yeah. Really heavy on the almond taste. I like that. It's light. It's not bad at all. This is the real deal though, cortado. You can actually taste espresso. I'm giving you guys a 7.2. Solid. For the last two spots, we're getting pizza. The first of which is Geraci's. Geraci's is a famous Cleveland restaurant that has been open for over 65 years. As a family owned business, Geraci provides an delicious array of Italian cuisine. Dishes ranging from meatballs, pastas, and my favorite food in the world, pizza. I've heard many great things from other locals through the weekend, and I'm super hype about Geraci's. But before we try it all, let's meet one of the family members, Patrick. Uh, Patrick, I'm a third generation uh, Geraci. Been working here since uh, my high school years, making pizzas with my grandparents, busting tables 
Hills with my grandpa. We started in uh, 1956 in Green Road and then moved here in 1960. Three locations, originally here for about 65 years. My uh, grandparents always had the philosophy of seeing the customers and seeing their smiles and so we never really introduced any kind of delivery out of this business. We've always been a uh, takeout and dine-in business so that my grandparents could see them. Always nice and rewarding to see those customers continue on coming in, telling us these stories of, I've been coming here since the 70s, you know, I, I used to work back here and stuff like that. You know, most of our food is traditional, warming Italian cuisine, lots of cheese, lots of sauce. Man, I appreciate so yeah, it. thank you, Loon. So we are currently in Geraci's. Oh, hey, hey, the man came out himself. Thank right. you so much, Patrick. We got some pies here. Oh got my gosh. Secret undercover meatball. We there. got the undercover meatball. I can't even get it on the menu. And then the, which one is this right here? This is our just traditional margarita pizza. Oh, I love me a margarita, man. This is our new pizza, the honey pie. Got it. Sausage, Romano cheese, and Akron hot honey. Oh my Probably. gosh. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. I, I gotta get some pictures of this. So. Jeez, like, look at this. What I really do appreciate about this place is it's like handcrafted. They're imperfectly perfect, which I love. You know when you get a pizza from a machine or something, like a chain, all the pizzas are so uniform and stuff? Bada bing, bada boom. We go margarita. And y'all know the deal. I'm a New Yorker, so you gotta eat it like a New York pizza, you know? Fuck. This is good. You know what's kind of sad? This is better than the pizza in Venice. Venice isn't known for food. And I don't want to be like that guy that always hypes up the next thing that I, I eat. But in terms of a margarita, that's the best margarita I had. I don't usually get a margarita pizza because, you know, I just go for cheese. In terms of margarita, that's the best margarita I've had. And I've had it at like 10, 20 spots. That's a really good fucking margarita pizza. I'm going to go with their meatball. They're known for meatballs, so. All right, let's give this a little dousing right here. A little dress. Mmm. Whoa. Imagine you're in an alternate universe, multiverse of Spider Man. And instead of sponge cakes being sweet, they're now savory foods. And now this is a sponge cake full of meat. Oh my God, does that take me back to like being a kid and spaghetti all the time? Because like that was the only Italian food we had at the house was spaghetti. That is a fire meatball. We have a secret menu item, undercover meatballs. On this you have pesto sauce, meatballs covered by a shit ton of cheese, which I love, caramelized onions, peppers, and then also at the way in after cooking it, they put a little bit of Frank's Red Hot and ranch on top. So this is like everything. What the fuck is this? It's like so much flavor. You're playing a video game. First level, easy level, you're tasting the crust. Second level, so you're fighting against the pesto. After the pesto, boom, you got meatballs. You, you think that that's over. Now the boss battle, right? You got all the caramelized onions that start coming out of nowhere and the pepper, the flavor is hitting you hard. Oh, you think it's over? Bonus round. You got some spice to it with the Frank's hot. Though my only critique of this is it's very salty. You, if you like salty, you'll like this. Very delicious pizza. I'm not gonna lie, I was not expecting Cleveland to have good pizza. And don't get me wrong, New York is still the king of pizza. But New York, you guys got some competition now. All right, we're gonna go with their pepperoni. This one's the thickest. It has the most like floof to it. Fuck, dude, this is such a good pizza. This is the last one of the pizzas and then we'll try the ravioli, then we're done. So this is the honey pie. It has everything ever. I think that's sausage, pepperoni. I think honey's on it. You can. Mm. All right, I take that comment back from earlier. This one's thicker than this one. This one's the thickest piece of holy shit. It's very different from the other. This one makes me feel like I'm burning calories chewing this. It's an aggressive pizza. That reminds me of um, Tostino's microwavable pizza, but on like absolute cracked steroids. Fried ravioli. Mozzarella. Good. Okay, so what I was gonna say is these two, the margarita and the, uh, I believe it's pepperoni or sausage or whatever, must, 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 must orders. You have to get this, especially if this is your first time here. Meatballs, great appetizer. Please get that, that's so good. These right here is my order. 
I wouldn't order that personally. Thank you so much for having me here, man. Oh my God, this place is so good. Total score, I'm gonna land this at a 9.5. This is a really good restaurant. Highly, highly recommend. I understand why it's been here for so long. <sighs> I'm gonna go to a coma now. We have to get pizza after this. Pizza review, review time. time. I had to get a quick one in. Uh, so we're, we're here at uh, Dewey's, Dewey's Pizza. Uh, Lee and Lamore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. We look at Cleveland right now and you hear Omicron and it sounds like a transformer. And uh, it's all the way down there. Next question. Holidays coming up, going on vacation. Uh, do I look super cool? All my sunglasses, non prescription, yeah. But um, Dewey's Pizza, here we go, you know. All right, so we got a slice right here. Very cr crunched together. Got a little pizza. Okay. Okay. What am I feeling right now? Very chewy pizza. Very standard. Nah. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like really good chain pizza. 6.9. You guys know the deal. Also great number 69. I'm trying to get you walking away with it. <laughs>